Now, now watch, we're gonna treat this, and we come back, I want you to really focus oh, on, those, oh. on those nucleuses. See, when you look at these, that's what blood from stem cells of blood cells are, you different kind of blood cells. You are gonna freak out how thick and juicy those nucleuses get. Because a nucleus is, every organelle actually, every freaking organelle in here, are you aware of this? Every organelle in here is dependent on copper? No, I mean, I okay, know there's, there's a different function for everything. Yeah, so, no, I looked at it all. Well, so why does the nucleus need copper? You have to link it, like you talked about, with yeah. your um, 38 or 34. Right? Yeah. Is that Confused? Don't be. This video touches upon so many issues, it is difficult to stay on one topic. You are looking at live living blood. It's floating by you. It looks in black and white because it's dark field white light. And the larger, brighter cells are white blood cells. The specimen you are looking at was infested or infected with spirochete bacterium and the movement is caused by a drop of copper one being added to the blood itself so it's going to be hard to wrap this all into to one video um, we first want to point out that Pharmaceuticals are a trillion dollar industry and not a billion dollar industry. And if you look at the entire medical profession. And the sad thing is, is that everybody that was in the room, even the really healthy people, tested positive for spirochetes. And the people that had greater illness or more chronic illness had higher loads or higher counts of spirochetes. Now, they're swimming by you here. Um, and this is in a treated blood sample. And we're going to show you before and after. When treated, the copper, the, it's actually called copper one, is attached and starts attaching to anything that has a spirochete in it or a larva of a spirochete. Spirochete has a life cycle. And love, they love to swim, and they are a prefer a damp, dark, low oxygen environment. But this this uh, sample was so infected with spirochetes that the the copper absorbed into the red cells. Those are those glowing things floating by, and made them look like smaller Christmas ornaments. And the larger white cells absorbed the copper like you wouldn't believe, and swelled up almost twice their normal size and became activated by this copper. And it's not the normal copper. It's called copper one. It's not the normal copper that comes out of the ground, copper two. But, you know, the first step in, in recognizing an invader is for the macrophage to tag the invader with a, like a little smoke screen so that everybody else can see it and rally to that point and the reason these red cells look elongated one is there's a partial polarization due to the spirochetes that are inside but also when you put a drop of water into a blood sample it creates a creates a hydrodynamic pressure and that also creates a teardrop effect and th this is a second specimen tested you notice the blood is flowing in a different direction on your television screen that's because it the drop was applied to a different area on the microscope slide. So again, you see how many of the red blood cells uh, absorb the copper one and it's, and it's glowing. But in the bloodstream itself, you can see flashing and you can see a lot of movement. And those are spirochete bacterium. And when exposed to the copper, uh, it, they were actually leaving the red blood cells where they were hiding in the red blood cells. The red blood cells they were hiding in uh, were still looked in, to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, but uh, obviously they can't be functioning at 100% when you have parasites breeding inside a red blood cell. But that highlighter there, that square highlighter, um, shows you uh, some of the smaller spirochetes. The adult ones are, are a little longer, but what happened is, is as soon as the adults went into the bloodstream 
the copper attached to them and automatically in inhibited their ability to be mobile. And the spiral keats are extremely mobile. They, they are swimmers. And, and so it makes only sense that uh, if, you know, all of us in the room tested positive, then pretty much most of the population has these. The neutrophils were amazing. They absorbed this copper one like you wouldn't believe in it. It, it just was watching a metamorphosis right before our eyes. But the sad thing about this is that we had to actually do this meeting in secret. And we had to be very careful about how we made the arrangements. And when we got to the lab, there was a strange truck parked outside. And we didn't even rendezvous as a group until two hours later. Um, that's how tight security was in this lab, which is behind three, four locked doors. Television cameras, security system. And, and you know, it's, it speaks to another huge issue that, that's going on in the world today, this global medical push and the, the persecution and execution of good people natural paths, holistic doctors, researchers. Now, there is a connection to some of these murders of these uh, scientists. The connection is a Nagalase connection. Nagalase, not to confuse you, is an enzyme that breaks down your immune system. And, then, and it's not theory. We know exactly how it breaks down the immune system. It affects a, a very specific electron uh, transport at a very specific point in the mitochondria of cells, and it also deactivates vitamin D. It breaks down vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is needed for the macrophage to do its job. Macrophage is a white cell that tags, that tags an invader or a bacterium. It tags it and um, exposes it and activates the immune system. Now, some of these red cells look like they have tentacles coming out. That's a spiral key coming out. We were very careful about making sure we weren't seeing thrombocytes attaching to the red cells because you did see them clumped together. And that's more like an electromagnetic polarity thing. So these spiral keats, we're, we're all putting our heads together and what we can do to help the spiral keats, obviously the copper one is is important but the sad thing is is some of these people tested positive for uh, spiral keats and according to the CDC they did not have Lyme disease well if these people didn't have Lyme disease what the heck is all the stuff swimming in the bloodstream now here's a before treatment uh, everything's rather stationary you can see the smaller plasmids uh, that's my term uh, moving about and this guy, uh, this researcher was telling us that copper one played a role in cell metabolism, that it actually helped us produce more energy, 17 times more cellular energy using ATP, adenosine triphosphate as your energy molecule. And so not only did was it killing or attaching to the spiral keats, not only was it charging or activating these macrophages it also supports cell energy and cell function and electron transport was not even a known metabolic pathway for energy and ATP production as long as 1980 81 uh, I did not get that in any of our physiology classes or my physiology classes we only learned about anaerobic and aerobic respiration metabolism one is uh, with with and one's without oxygen the the one without oxygen is also known as glycolysis anaerobic well heck that's that's cancer and that's many many organisms that will hurt you um, do this they they are anaerobic they don't like oxygen even cancer ferments glucose fermentation is an anaerobic process and in fact, fermentation is another name for glycolysis. So we, we put the copper one in there, and of course you see the hydrodynamic pressure being created and uh, the, habit, the uh, flow of the red cells. Copper one uh, has only a single electron in its outer shell, 
And this is what makes it not only bile available, but very effective in what it does. And there's been a lot, a lot of new research on these, uh, these noble metals, gold, silver, uh, molybdenum, and other trace metals that are supposed to be very healthy for you. Now, the, some of these red cells are especially elongated. That's because they're infected. And when you set up a electrical grid or a gradient where it's positive on one side of the specimen and negative on the other side, uh, you, you can elongate your red cells just through the polarity. So the ones that are especially elongated are infected. Now, the clumping up together is, is a process that happens. When the spirochetes are attached, you can see the chains forming there on the bottom. They form these uh, strands, and these strands then are devoured by really, look how bright those, those white cells have become. They're so bright you can't even notice them anymore. They're, they look like UFOs in your blood bloodstream. But that was amazing transformation, what, what uh, happened with the spirochetes, what happened with the macrophages. So the copper one is really, um, it's, it's hard to patent it but you can patent the process in which you make it. And this gentleman probably holding on to millions of dollars worth of copper one. And what's unfortunate is he has to be careful about his safety. Now, the viruses, we were also there to discuss and look at the viral link to some of these diseases. And... He's finding these spirochetes in all of these diseases, but um, in some of these diseases, like multiple sclerosis, lupus, Graves' disease, et cetera, et cetera, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, they're finding antiviral antibodies, not antispirochete antibodies. And, and, they, and those still do exist if you have spirochetes. But they're also finding antibodies against cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, are the two biggest things. Now we have an enterovirus that, that's creeped into our country via the southern borders. But the problem with spirochetes is they produce ammonia. Ammonia is toxic to your nerves. It's toxic to just about every organ in your body. It can cause uh, rapid kidney failure. It can cause neuroinflammation. And people high in ammonia become agitated and confused or depressed and lethargic. So when we have people that have viruses and spirochetes, then you know my my approach to to autoimmune was if you don't treat the viral connections, you're ignoring a major component of of autoimmune disease. He's saying, well, if you ignore the spirochetes, you're 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 ignoring the major component. But what we do agree on both is that it's going to be hard to get healthy without getting rid of both. So this guy's developed a treatment for Epstein-Barr, and he's developed a treatment for copper, uh, for spirochetes, and a, a way to better health. Um, but what I'm telling you is that the DNA repair is you can see it going on in a microscope. You can see the copper attach at the top and bottom of the DNA during the transcription.